ten minutes. So I'm gonna try to like be as condensed as possible, but I'm gonna put it work, so I'm gonna try. Um yeah, so like everyone else did, I'm probably gonna start with my keep up stories because I didn't start off as quiet like they did. <laughs> I was loud from the beginning. <laughs> and to the end. It's not gonna change. But um yeah, so I started with Lucas Club with Reina and there I actually met someone like uh, no, who had a sister in Bronx Science Key Club and I learned about the big walks they did, how big the club was. And it's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to come to the Bronx Science Club in the first place because of their key club. So I was so happy when I got in. <laughs> um but yeah, so that's how I started and then I wasn't one of the people that went to events all the time. I was just one of the, I remember I was over there in the corner. We sat there with the freshmen and the current president, Victoria Lee, would always, always yell at us because we were loud. I'm sorry, but we are. Um, we were always loud and it was really annoying for her. But um, yeah, so I was only just doing meetings. So, but later on, I ended up running for a position, which I don't, at this point right now, I don't think I would have deserved running for anyway. But I ran for secretary, and I was fully like encouraged by Amanda Tam. And I met her because we were lost going to breast cancer walk, so she guided me the right way, metaphorically and physically. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so she constantly encouraged me, and even though I was like, what? Okay, I still did it. And that was honestly kind of traumatizing because I stood there with 32 points, not gonna lie. I was up here saying a speech and I had 32 points. And from the question and answer portion, I knew that they did not want me up here. They didn't want me here. They kept on asking questions and I was just like, okay, clearly they all want me off. And they, it just, it was bad. And it was really, really bad. And I didn't want to repeat that ever again. So, and that kind of scared me off to keep up. But I still stayed and I don't know why. Um, during that time, I later found out that I actually got a lot of votes, which surprised me. And then there was this one girl, who I will not name, who was also running for the same position as me, a secretary, and she was like a sophomore. And then she told everyone that the only reason that I got votes in the first place was because I cheated. Um, and first of all, I was like, how the heck do I even do that? <laughs> like, you guys are counting it, not me. So that killed me inside because it honestly like killed my confidence but yeah I still say still don't know why I think I'm crazy um later on I actually like finally went to a vet because I kind of realized that you know what if you want to stay here might as well like immerse yourself in it so me and my friend who's not here anymore but um we went to vision walk and that literally changed everything like everything you have no idea that's where I got to meet like upperclassmen, not, not Wilson, sorry, I met you great times, um, but upperclassmen who actually, like, I got to know who I became friends with, and it was really nice, and ever since then, I got hooked on Keep Up, and I got hooked on everything, and I just, I did free rice with Katie, and, hi Katie, I did, <laughs> I did free rice with Katie, even though we were freshmen, I saw the video this morning, and I was like, I look exactly the same, yeah. um, and later on, I ran for VP again in my sophomore year, and not gonna lie, that speech was, that sucked. It was, it was a really bad speech. <laughs> it was a bad speech, and my nerves was like, it's just, it's not good. But the very next day, Amanda again, I was walking down uh, the stairs to Kim, and she was coming up, and she was like, she pulled me aside, she was like, Jasmine, you're running for president, right? And I'm like, I just lost VP, are you like nuts? <laughs> and she was like, but you're running for president, right? And I'm like, um, I have Intel, I have this, I have that, and she's like, no, but you, you can find time. You're judging. You can find time. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and then, but it really got me thinking because I really did want to do something for this club. And I know in, in freshman year, some of my friends who actually aren't here again, but um, some of my friends kept joking because I stayed and I really wanted to be a part of it. They kept on joking that I would be president one day. And I was like, you guys are loco. They, they all hate me. <laughs> but it happened, so yeah. Um, when I ran for VP, like after after that, um, I believe it or not, I would not, I wasn't able to stand up in front of Keep Up ever again. Like after after the first time I ran for secretary, I just it was the worst. Like I couldn't do happy quarters, I didn't do any of that. But because I wanted to run for president, I forced myself to get up there. And I, I still remember one of the one of my first um, 
Happy Quarters was to advertise for Light the Night, and I was a junior back then, and I was outreach committee head, which is a, a combination of public relations and social media, and I just like talked about it, and I was shaking. They didn't know, no one knew, but I was genuinely shaking, like I am now, because I haven't been this nervous since that time, but yeah, and it was just really bad, but I tried to work on it, because in the end, I kind of wanted to be president. So junior year came, and elections came, and I ran, and obviously I got it, because it was, yeah, it was different from everything else, because it kind of killed me inside, to be honest. I ran unopposed, and, oh, I can't. That killed my confidence. I generally, because of the fact that I ran unopposed, I wanted to back out. And that was kind of stupid when I think about it, because I, you guys wouldn't have had a president if I backed out. But I just thought that I wasn't good enough, I wasn't worth it, and I didn't, I didn't deserve it. And that mindset carried on until my first term, uh, until my term, term as president. And I would, I'm not even looking at this, what the heck? <laughs> this is a lot of pages. Um, but I, it carried on to my term as president. And I remember in the beginning, I would constantly tell them, I was just like, please impeach me. I don't deserve to be here. I don't, I was just overwhelming because I pressured myself to the point of like insanity because I wanted to be the perfect president and I wanted to make you guys proud. And I kind of hope I did. But at the same time, I'm sorry, I kind of failed you. I, I think there were a lot of things that I planned on doing and I ended up not doing. I don't want to do this. Um, yeah, there were a lot of things I wanted to do, but I couldn't do. And there was just some time constraints and other stuff, but yeah, I still blame myself for things like that. And I didn't notice until I was talking to Sophia on the bus that my mindset after like the beginning actually gradually changed, and that was because of my board. In the beginning, I kept on, I did not believe in myself at all. It was so bad. And I just thought that Timmy would have been better off as president at that point. I was like, I don't deserve to be here. And then, I don't know why, but gradually, they were always there. They were like, you're crazy, just just stop. And they just waved away all my doubts. And every time I needed someone to cry on, one of them was there, or all of them, it didn't matter. They were always there, they were always like, you're crazy, you can do this. And honestly, I wouldn't be here without them, because they don't know how much they mean to me. They don't know how much, don't cry. <laughs> they don't know how much they actually like gave me confidence to be up here, but they did. Oh, I can't. Oh. So, I'm sorry if I always give too much love to my board, but that's why. Because without them, you wouldn't have had me as president. I would have probably quit a long time ago because I succumbed to all my doubts and self-esteem issues, whatever. But, uh, yeah, okay, I, I, should, I should go along with this. So, the moral of my story, in a sense, is, uh, one, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, one, believe, always, always believe in yourself. Um, luckily for me, I had Am Amanda Tam, I had them, even before, even before, we were on the board, and before I had my position, I already had them, and I was lucky for that. But you won't always have people like them to support you, and sometimes if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't go for it, you're gonna miss out on so many things. If I had just like listened to my inner self and not had gone for this position, God, I would have missed all the Avatar fights. I would have missed going to LTC with you guys. Like, oh my goodness. So just go for it. Like, it doesn't matter. If you don't believe in yourself, then we will. It doesn't matter. Like, go to us if you need. Like, you might not be someone you're close to or you know well, but if you ever, ever, ever need someone to hype you up and believe in you, I will always be there. Even if, like, I haven't had a conversation with you before. But I will. I'll do it. <laughs> um, another thing is be nice to people. In my freshman year, all the, like, it was... I'm not gonna lie, scary because the amount of freshmen and underclassmen we have now, that was like the amount of juniors we had, and they were so dedicated. They were a family, and that's why I wanted so badly to be a part of that. And even though they didn't intentionally be mean to me by being exclusive, in a sense, they were. And that's what I noticed sometimes with you guys. 
like especially the dedicated members, those who go to events more, you kind of, I'm sorry, no offense, but you kind of close yourself off. And I really don't want you to get, you guys to do that because you never know, you might be closing off um, an important relationship with someone. If I hadn't talked to Sophia first, she wouldn't be my friend right now, to be honest. Like she was so quiet. If I was quiet and she was quiet, this, this would not have happened. Okay, <laughs> so I'm telling you now, get out of your comfort zone. Take baby steps. At least you try. Just do it. Because you could so totally reach heights. You don't even know. Um, and stop. Okay, not talk about my height right now. Um, <laughs> so, no, because I know the minute. I just knew that. Um, but yeah, be nice to people. Bring them in. Like, even during events, when you see someone, like, not talking to anyone by themselves, the fact that they went to an event and knowing that they didn't know anyone else, that's, like, an insane amount of bravery because back then, I wouldn't be able to have gone to an event without someone. So, like, a person like that, you should take them in, man. Like, they could be the next lieutenant governor for all you know. Just, just be friendly and open and just, I don't know, say, say hi to strangers, not, not be strangers, but, like, in, in events, in, in, in Kegel events, because they'll say hi back, and you never know what will happen. Um, so, some pride, uh, some pride, dang it. Um, some advice, take pride in this club. You really don't know until you see the other clubs, like, how much we've done. We were number one in hours in New York District. That's like all of New York State, the key club. Like, we volunteered the most. That's crazy. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, you should be so proud of being in this club, of all of these group, this group of people. And not only that, we've raised so much money. Sophia already told you, I don't remember. But she's 4,000 something. <laughs> like, yeah, with, with that, you, I saw you, I showed you guys last week that well without us, maybe that well wouldn't have been built. Maybe the people there wouldn't have been able to get like access to water or go to school or be able to like plant those crops. You guys make a difference. No matter how insignificant you may pe may peel may peel okay. <laughs> may feel. No matter how insi insignificant you may feel, as long as you're with these people, as long as you have that courage, that optimism and that passion, you will get to places, you will make a difference in someone's life. And, okay, hold up, hold up. Um, <laughs> okay, to the members, like everyone else on this board has said, you guys inspire me. You have no idea how much you inspire me. Towards, like, in the beginning of my term, one, one, other, one of the other reasons why I didn't quit was I kept thinking of you guys, like, uh, my mantra became, what would the members say? What would the members think? How would they feel? Will they have fun? Will they do this? Literally, that was the only thing on my head, in our heads, all the time. So later on, after LTC, when I was <laughs> sitting in the freshman girl room talking about the K fam pa family tree and how every single one of you told me that you wanted to run for something, you have no idea oh, how happy I was because that made me feel as if I've done something. That it made me feel kind of accomplished and proud. You have no idea how proud I am of you, especially of those, like when I found out that the majority of you guys applied for divisional like position, you didn't even just go for a club, man, you went to division. That's like a big leap right there. Good job. <laughs> but you took that initiative. I am so proud and so, oh God, I can't. I feel like a mom. But I am so, 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 so proud to have known you guys, to have at least seen that part of your journey. And to the members that go to every event, like, kudos to you, man. Waking up at 4 a.m., I, I can't do that. Like, I, I did that a few times, but I can't do it, like, every single day. Um, but I know why. Um, you wake up at, like, 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. in the morning to get to an early event. But the, the thing is, it's okay, because everyone else who goes to that event is sharing that same thing. So that's one more thing you guys can bond over. And eventually you talk to people and then friendships form. 
and then after that, everyone who participates, like, you guys are the volunteers, but everyone else who, like, participates in the event, like, concern around, like, the people who, like, raise money and stuff, they come, and the energy goes up, and the hype levels go up, and it's, like, magnificent and amazing, and then some of those people who participated may just, like, go on their way, and some of them may stop to thank you, and you're just there, you woke up, you stand there and you cheer for them, they're the people that actually, like, went out to, like, raise money and stuff, and they're there thanking you, because you actually matter, and you are significant, and you probably made their day so much better. I remember, like, our first concern run, uh, that was our first event as a, uh, as a board, we were cheering, I was with Timmy, and then this guy stopped to say thank you, and then I literally just burst out crying. I was like, thank you for thanking me, <laughs> because you actually noticed I existed, and the thing is, during that time, during events like that, everyone, no matter if you're a stranger or not, you're there for a common goal. You're there to solve a problem. You're there to like raise awareness or even make a cure for a disease. And that's like, that's not something you get all the time. It's it's an amazing, amazing feeling to be there with people who want to change the world. Essentially, that's not something you get with different clubs in this like school or in the world. To be honest. There aren't that many kids who will go out of their way every weekend to volunteer and make a difference in their community. So you should be proud of being in this club and take as much as you could possibly get. Okay, so the other thing. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, I'm sorry. Um, the changes people go through in this club is like honestly breathtaking and amazing. I got to see two of my best friends grow and that was magnificent. I kind of wish that I had that growth because it would have made me something else besides <laughs> the loud one. But I got to see these two grow. And honestly, like, in the beginning, they did not talk. They were shy. If I had, if it was, like, freshman year, if I had gone back to their freshman year, I would not be able, like, if I was freshman me here right now, I would not be able to recognize these two because they wouldn't have been able to sit here and talk to you without crying or without just, like, staring or walking away. Like, you don't understand. This club changes people for the better and makes them into better leaders. They cared so much about this club that they actually went out of their way to come out of their comfort zone and serve. You have no idea like how amazing that is if you watch. If you just watch the people around you. You're here right now, but later on in your senior year, when you look back, you're like, whoa, that person wasn't like that before. They weren't like lieutenant governor, they weren't like district governor, whatever. They were just them, but you won't be. You won't be in four years. Um, okay, I don't even, I'm not even going along with this. So, I never told you guys the reason why I ran for president. And the reason why was because, not just because Amanda told me to or encouraged me or whatever. One of the reasons why was because this club has given me honestly so much. When I look at my high school career, this is the only thing I see. The only thing I will miss, to be honest. Like, when I graduate, this is the only thing. After this, it's like, why am I still in this building? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Ms. Rangel, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll get something in the end, I promise. That I can't tell you right now. Um, you have a surprise. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, it's not a surprise anymore because I told her she has a surprise. But Jasmine, you ruined it. Just sorry, on. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've never put my heart and soul into something like this. I've never put this much effort, this much energy, everything into like, like honestly, if I did that with everything else, I'd probably be going to Harvard. But I put it all in keep up. My heart and soul is in this club, so when I go, it will die. Um. I'm honestly scared, to be honest, like, to, I'm, I'm really scared, because you guys are all supportive, and you guys are all encouraging, and you honestly make me feel confident in my own skin, and you make me feel like I can do anything, reach the moon, reach the stars, no matter how tall I am, but you guys make me feel like I can. Why are you still, okay, hi. Um, <laughs> so thank you for that. Okay, back to the reason why I was present, I got off track again. Um, yeah, I wanted to serve you guys because I can't, it was my way of repaying Keep Up for all the things that I've got. I got a family through this club, and it was my only way of thinking to make sure that it reached new heights, to make sure that it did better and greater things. And I hope that I got 
somewhat there. I hope that I made you proud in a sense, hopefully. But I know that I kind of tried my best. Not kind of, I did try my best without going insane. And at least I have that consolation. Another reason why I ran, one of the reasons why I didn't back out of that that long part of my life was because of them, <laughs> again. I didn't think that they would run, to be honest, but when I found out that they did, and when I found out that we all had different, we were running for diff different positions, you have no idea how excited I was, because I really wanted to be on a board with them, and I knew that maybe that was a slip chance, but it happened, so, ah. um, yeah, that was great. Um, okay, I'm, I'm like, thank you, it's time for thank yous. Um, to the committees, thank you for dealing with me. I was very encouraging, <laughs> but I know I pushed you hard, and I'm really sorry for that, especially like social media and public relations. I pushed you hardcore, and I'm really sorry, but like that was my old to me, so uh, I couldn't just, yeah. Um, members, I can never thank you enough for the inspiration you give me every day, not just <coughs> as a president, but in a sense to be a better person, because one of you guys have told me that like I was kind of like your role model, and I was like, but, <laughs> but because of that, it made me feel as if I needed to be a better person. I needed to do things like, I need to go out and make you guys proud. So thank you for motivating me all the time, always, every day, all in the future. Um, so my board, okay, 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 I got this. Sophia Nina, I'm gonna, can I read this off so I don't cry? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for dealing with me. Honestly, seven years with you, four years with you. Can't believe you haven't gotten rid of me yet. Um, I really don't know how you did it, but you did, so thank you for that. This club wouldn't be where it is without you. The points, attendance, fundraisers, not, not even. You guys have no idea the amount of time these people put into this club. When we say we want to run for a position to serve, it literally is, because we, like, take hours upon hours of our sleep to just, like, plan events, or, like, think about all the bad things we've done, and how to improve on them, and how to make this club better. Literally, we spend hours upon hours. And I remember these two, like, especially in the beginning of the year, when it was, like, the crazy months, they put their heart and soul into that, and they barely got sleep, so thank you for just doing your job. Um, I honestly don't know what I would have done without you. Sophia, thank you for always feeding us, taking care of us, <laughs> for always feeding us and taking care of us. And you know exactly when we did, whether it be tea or ice cream and pizza. Um, I want smoothies. Sushi. Yeah, um, right now, thank you for being our practical one and, and rational one. You always kept us on the ground and never let us get too far up there. Um, also, thank you for being immensely, immensely protective. Yeah, I don't want to go go over that. No, let's not. Let's not. But she's very protective, so don't get on her bad side. Oh, that story. Yeah, that's right. Um, Wesley and Timmy, you two were my stress balls. My physical stress balls. I am so sorry. <laughs> I am so, 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 so sorry. You two honestly handled my emotions well, whether... Like, during divisional, whether I needed a shoulder to cry on or someone to rent to, you two were there, taking turns, taking your shifts. Um, thank you, honestly, to all of you, because you guys mean the world to me, and you know that. This club, all of you mean the world to me, especially you guys at Pisces. You mean, like, everything to me. So thank you for being there. Thank you for going on this journey with me, and thank you for making this terminal worthwhile, and for making me stay and not leave. <laughs> Um, okay, hold on. Who's that advisor? Advisor. Um, <laughs> you guys are the real MVP. You, like, you gave up your time, your effort, even right now. Thank you for always, always being there, for inspiring us. And like Rana said, I love your friendship, the three of you, because it's like, I wish we could be like that in the future. We could have that, fun, that much fun at work. Um, <laughs> and... Without you guys, honestly, none of this would be possible. Like, 
you should, you guys should give them more credit and thank them, like, every, every waking moment, because without them, we would not be in this room, without them, this club wouldn't be here. They joined Koalas, they, they went out of their way to join a separate club for us, so we could exist. Like, they're amazing. They spent a weekend, not paid, to, like, watch over 26 high schoolers. <laughs> like, let, let's be real, I would not have done that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we got you guys some, well you, well, you can give it to them later, but we got you guys something in hopes that maybe that would show a bit of our gratitude. Go ahead. Three, two, one. I now adjourn this meeting. <laughs>